all, the Blended Church family. Thank you guys, man. I can tell you, Pastor, we were breaking bread last night. And, you know, it's just it's good to be with real people, you know, because I'm as real as it get. You know, I'm, I'm not one of these, you know, celebrities or anything like that. I, I just been saved by grace. Amen. And, and I love the, the church. I love God's house. I love what God calls us for. And he appoints us for his will. And if we can get out of ourselves, and that's, that's for any of you here today, if you can get out of yourself, you know, if you can get out of yourself and just let God work through you, he'll do something in you that you will not be able to understand. Amen. 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 This is, um, wow, this is my favorite church. I wish I could sing, but I can't. Because when I hear songs like the blood and them worshiping, I'd be like, man, I wish I could sing. But uh, God said, well, you, don't, you don't need to sing. You just need to, <laughs> you need to do what I've called you to do. Well, it's good to be back with you guys. Amen. You know, I always say this is my favorite church, the blended church. You know why? Because look at the color yeah. of the church. Because this is what the kingdom's going to look like. You know, it's not... It's not going to be one-sided, and we're going to be one way, we're going to be this way. we got to get past all that. we got to get past the color of what we are, and we got to understand who Jesus is. When they sing the songs about Jesus, do you really understand who Jesus is? Jesus is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He is who he said he is, and what he will do in your life, no man can do. Only Jesus can do that in your life. So we look at, we, we, we as people, we got to get over some of these things, you know, to get to the place where God has called us to be. He's called us to, he's called us to love each other and care for each other, you know. We, we, we're in the time now where everybody is running in confusion you know, because of what's happening in the society. Well, you're looking in the wrong place. Wow. Wow. See, you're looking in the wrong place. If you pick up the book, you'll get the revelation of what's important. Amen. And it's always been in there. So I want to encourage whoever's here today that walked in here and, you know, have some doubts and fears and confused about a lot of things. Yeah. God is still sitting on the throne. Woo! You know, some of you, some of you need to really get excited about who Jesus is. Yes, See, if you can get excited about Jesus just like you get excited about a football game and a basketball game, then you'll be in there. Because you'll spend a lot of time and a lot of energy in that, putting into that preparation for that. But you won't put your preparation in for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Oh, my, 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 the people are missing out. God is so good. When you taste and see that the Lord is good, you'll understand. I just want to share a little bit with you about overcoming temptations and issues. Temptation and issues, which we all have, you know, and I think about the temptations, real temptations. Everyone has temptations, but some folks entertain them. Get your eyes off the temptations on, on to Christ. Get your eyes off the temptations. We all have temptations in some kind of way. If we don't, we sit in here, we're lying to ourselves. Because if you're in the flesh, you got some temptations, baby. Come on. Come on. Something's going on yeah. with all of us. The temptations are real and the desires are real. And if you don't have no word down inside of you, well, guess what? That temptation is going to override you. Yeah. So that's what we're here to talk about today, those temptations that we have. And I want you to examine yourself. Don't look at nobody else. Look at yourself. We all have to examine ourselves about the temptations that we have. Yeah. You know, when we talk about it, when Mark was talking about it and, and Jesus went to the wilderness, and he was tempted too. You go to Matthew 4, 4, and he, but he said, and he said, but he answered and said, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It is written. See, he was tempted. The enemy tempted him to give him all this stuff. I'll give you all this, just like he do to us. I'll give you this, just don't worship God. Wow. Just don't go to church because it's raining. Yeah. Just don't go to church because it's cold outside. You know, the devil tempts us to all those things. Oh, you could just stay home. Oh, you could just watch it online. But yeah, you can watch it online, but you can be alive and you can be here and have the miracle that you need God to give to you. Yeah. See, because God's the, miracle. God's the miracle maker when we show up. Because yeah. when we show up, he show out. So you know the temptations of Jesus was real by the enemy. 
just like he does all of us. Here, I'll, I'll let you have all this, you know. Gerald, you're talking about Jesus now, but aren't you lonely now? You don't have no more friends? Well, they wasn't friends anyway. See, once you get your priorities right and understanding who you walking with, then you can overcome any kind of temptation. Because so many of us sit in those places and uh, I, I coulda, woulda, shoulda. What? I coulda, woulda, shoulda been dead. <laughs> Playing around with the devil, how he's tempting us. He's tempting us for more money, more of this, more fame, more whatever it is. He's always bringing temptations inside of us. He's dangling around to us. And then you know what? Most of us have jumped forward because guess what? We don't really have a true foundation. That's why Jesus, when he was in the wilderness and he was hungry, you know, after being in for 40 days and 40 nights, and there was, there was Satan tempting him. And he said, it is written, it is written, man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So you understand, you will understand the power of Jesus when you spend more time with him. Amen. You know, too many of us are spending more time dealing with the fact that the news is telling me something. The news is telling me what's happening in our society. <laughs> well, we all living in it. Yeah. We all know what's happening. Yeah. But I do know that I do know know one thing, something's far greater happening on the inside of me than what the news is telling me. See, because we, we, we dwell in the fact of the temptations of what the news is saying, what social media is saying, what other folks are saying. We deal with other folks. Well, girl, I ain't going to that church no more because they like this and like that. Well, that's your problem. I ain't listening to nobody. I'm going where God has called me to be. I need to get up and I need to be, I need to be participating in church. See, the problem with the church is that not enough people participate in their assignment. That's why they can't fulfill their promise over their life. The promises over your life is far greater than you. If you participate in what God's called you to do, there's a gift down inside of you that God wants to develop and he wants to bring it forward. But if you don't allow him to do it and you allow the enemy to tempt you and keep you away from what God's called you to do, you can never walk into your destiny. Your destiny is far, is far greater than any temptation. Any earthly temptation that comes against us, your destiny is greater than that. So many of us don't understand that because what happens is we don't have the transformation on the inside. We always want people to look, like, look at us on the outside. I don't want you to look at my outside. I want you to look at my insides. See, my insides is far greater than my outside because that's where God pours his spirit into you. And he allows you to get over the news. He allows you to get over social media. He allows you to get over what folks are talking about. Folks talking about fear. It ain't no fear. I'm walking in faith. Folks talking about, yeah, folks dying. Yeah, we're dying. But see, if I have to die, my time, God called my name, just like he called Joe's name, it's my time. I'm going, hey, I win either way. If I stay here, I win. If I leave here, I win. I can't walk in fear. I got to be able to walk in the faith of who God is. I got to believe what the Word of God is telling me. I can't believe what the news is telling me. I can't believe what social me media is saying. I can't believe what other folks are saying. Did you hear that song they talk about? Nothing but the blood. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not about anything else. If you understand the blood of Jesus Christ and understand the symbol of the cross and that blood, that is holy blood, that blood comes into you, it purifies you, it liberates you, it redeems you, it makes you wholeness, it makes you righteous, it makes you a right standard, it makes you a winner, it does not make you a loser. You will lose going on the news. You will never lose with Jesus. Ever since I've been following Jesus, I've been winning. Is there some struggles? Is there some issues? Yes, there's always going to be some trials and tribulations, but I'm still winning because he protects me, because I belong to him, because of the blood. When you understand the blood, oh, my. I feel like preaching this morning. I don't know why. Something getting into me. I don't know what it is. Something happens 
You know, something happens when I start talking about Jesus. I don't know about you. Something different happens inside of me when I start talking about Jesus. Down on the inside, the revelation starts to come. I start seeing things. I start hearing things because greater that he that's in me than he that's in the world is Christ himself that rules and reigns. When the devil tempted him, he said, it is written. What do you say to the devil? What do you have to fight the devil with? Because he's coming after everybody. And I woke up this morning, he said, you're not going to preach. <laughs> you know how that is, Pastor. That heaviness. For no reason. Yesterday was a joy. We had a cookout and eating, having fun, breaking bread with brothers and just talking. You wake up the next day, get ready to go preach, the devil all over you. <laughs> but you know what? He got to go. He got to go. You know, he got to go there. There's no, there's, there's no in-between with me no more. I don't play this game with the enemy. You, he's he's got to go. You know, and that's what you have to be able to tell him. You got to go. If you have the foundation of who you are and the biblical principles of who you are, when you tell him he's got to go, he's got to go. Amen. See, but you can't just carry him with you because, see, if you carry him, allow him to stay inside of your head, he's going to deceive you just like he tried to deceive Jesus. And when he was hungry, don't you know when you're hungry, you can be crazy? <laughs> you imagine how we are when we're hungry, we don't want nobody bothering us? You think about Jesus when the devil was tempting Jesus and he was hungry. You imagine the kind of way he felt, but did you imagine that what I love about Jesus is every circumstance, every situation, Jesus is always pressing through. Through everything that comes up on his plate, he's always pressing through, no matter what it is. And he's created that in us to be able to do that if we just believe. Yes, sir. You know, I don't think enough of us believe. The devil, what does the devil do? He tempts us to hold on to things against us. He tempts us to hold on things against us, our own self. Me, myself, and I. That's what he does. He brings those things that you have done, and he says, you're not worthy of God's grace and God's peace. But the reality is, is none of us are worthy of it. But God gives it to us anyway. When you understand and you stay faithful to God, he gives you the reality of who you are and you deserve whatever happens good for you because he's had made, he has made it that way for us. And a lot of times we can't accept it because the enemy, he tricks us and makes us believe, you know, tempts us to hold on to things against us. He lies about what will make us happy. Oh, he lies about, he lies about what will make us happy. He said, if you just had a little bit more of this. If, if you just want that woman over there, he's lying to you. That's a Jezebel. <laughs> he's lying to you and making you think. If you just, it's going to make you happy. It's going to make you feel better. It's not going to make you feel better. It's going to make you feel better for that moment. Then when you're done, you're going to be like, oh, what am I doing? That's how he does us. He, make, he, he, he lies to you and want to make you feel happy about all these earthly things. See, he, he wants you to keep your eye off the kingdom of God. See, people don't put their eyes on the kingdom of God. The kingdom is far greater than these earthly things. When you understand it's a great kingdom that God speaks, and he speaks to you when you enter into his kingdom. Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added into you. Then all these things. All these things are not stuff. It's great stuff that he will add into you that you could never imagine. Yeah. How, could God, how could God pull a, a broken piece like me out of a pit and put me in a pulpit? You can't tell me God's not good. You cannot tell me he's not good. And some of you here today, he's waiting on you. But you're allowing the enemy to just keep you stuck. 
See, the enemy will keep you stuck on stupid. I mean, many times I was stuck on stupid. Oh, I don't know who I am. You know, this is who they say I am. See, this, that's what they were saying I was. You know, they were saying I was a great baseball player and I was uh, lost and I, I was going to die in the midst of my addiction. But God was saying something else. And that's just like every last one of us in here. Some folks have said something about you, but God is saying something else about you. When are you going to believe what God is saying about you? When are you going to come to that place and understand God has something far greater for you if you can just come to the place to believe in what he has for you? Because the temptations of our life is real. Amen. Come on. He, tempts, he, he, he tempts us to stir up division between one another. Ha! Yeah. Why are we always talking about folks? Stirring up stuff. We need to get past that. We need to get over that. Folks are talking about me now. They were talking about me when I was lost. They're talking about me now. Good. <laughs> but I don't need to go down that road talking about folks. I need to let them be because they don't like me. That's, that's, that's good. I got to keep moving. God's got something for me to do. I got to stay on the plan that God has something for me. I can't look back. Too many of us looking back, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone's in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things will come new if I keep looking forward. If I'm looking back, I can never get to the new that God has for me. Too many of us are looking back. We're looking back at things. We need to look forward. You need to keep springing forward. Folks are always pointing fingers, talking about each other. God said, well, you know what? You're just not ready to be used by me. Because he'll leave you right where you're at. If you can't encourage people when they're hurting and struggling and they're going through and your situation is a little bit better, ain't no big better, just a little bit. Because that's all our situations, just a little bit better. Why? Some of us because we understand and we pay attention to God's will instead of being tempted by the enemy. That's the only reason we're walking in the waves. Because I'm paying attention to God. I'm not paying attention to what the enemy's talking about. I'm not paying attention to what folks are talking about. See, once we get wrapped up around that and to what folks are talking about and the enemy's talking about, we're stuck. You know, and the reason why we get stuck is because we don't have a biblical foundation. Because it's in the word and the development of you, who you are in Christ is in this book. This is the only way I got a chance to develop. I didn't get a chance to develop when I played Major League Baseball for 17 years. I was just a baseball player. But when I picked up this book, I developed inside who, what a man looks like. How a man walks, what, he, what, what a man talks about, what a man thinks about, what a man do. So you don't think about all those things. We think we're a man because, you know, we, we're doing this and we have a job and we're successful and everything is going well. That's why they got the folks in Holly Weird. <laughs> I'm being nice, but, you know, they, they, they just got the folks. They got the folks, you know, they think we, uh, we have it all together. We, why, well, I don't need Jesus. Why? You know why they don't need Jesus? Because they've been tempted by the enemy because he's given them all this and let them have all that earthly stuff. But see, he hadn't told any of them, by the way, at the end, you coming with me. See, he don't tell you that part. He lets you have all the fun you want to have. Think you have all the stuff you got and you got it going on. But at the end of your life, you belong to me. Because you had a chance when you were here to find the king, but you didn't find the king, and I'm glad you didn't. I'm glad you found your pleasure in your earthly things. Let's just keep it real. I don't have time to play. People, folks are dying. Folks are losing their way. Folks think they have it all together, and they don't understand. You don't have it. None of us have it all together. It was only one person had it all together, and that was Jesus himself. After all the temptations, after all the things he had to go through, and after all he went through for you and me and every last one of us on the cross, 
hanging there for you. Glory to God. When you understand him hanging on that cross for you, you understand him taking himself away from everything else and knowing that death is coming to me. But knowing that he would get up, and not only would he get up, he would get up with all power. Yes. Yes. Woo! Amen. Come on. See, when you know for yourself, you, that you would die to Christ right now in the natural, die in your flesh to Christ, and you would get up just like Christ did, you would be resurrected just like Christ. I didn't, I didn't make it up. It's in the book. He said it himself. If every person that picks up this book, every person that follows these commandments will be resurrected and be new. Will be born of a new spirit. Not an earthly spirit, but a kingdom spirit. You will become a different person from the standpoint of living here and you will talk a different way because now you've been born of his spirit. A holy man, a righteous man Amen. that was tempted just like all the rest of us. The devil tempts us to be afraid. Ha. Yeah, he's tempted all of us to be afraid and walk into fear. Yeah, the pandemic came, and yes, it's real, and yes, we could die, and yes, we got to be careful. But I'm not afraid. I got to get you a point. Yeah, I was in that place too when it first came and everything shut down because I was usually traveling on the road, doing ministry, doing God's work, and all of a sudden you just <laughs> stop. Yeah. And I could tell you, I was like, man, this is crazy. And I was laying in the bed and I wasn't getting up and I was going through it. It was like, you know, no travel and everything stopped. Holy Spirit spoke to me one day. He said, what's wrong with you? He said, you better get up out of that bed and get going. Amen. There I was, knowing God, too, but there I was, going into fear just like everybody else. And the Holy Spirit said, you better get up, you better rise up, you better get up into your worship and do what you do and continue to serve God and continue to saturate yourself in the Word and grow. Amen. So it was a time of growing. It was a time of growing through, throughout the pandemic and everything. I just started laying with God. I started laying in the Word even more. And I just wanted more of God. I didn't want to care about what the television was talking about and, and the pandemic and everything that was going on from an earthly standpoint. I said, God, I'm going to stay with you. I'm going to stay with you. I get up and worship God. And I get going. And some of you need to get up and get going. What well, they saying this. they saying this could happen. That can, yes, it can happen. It can happen anywhere. It can happen even with us covering up our face. It can happen. Well, I'm afraid to die. Well, for me to die is me to live. Well, because see, I understand it now. Do you understand for you to die is for you to live and have life and have an eternal life, not an earthly life? If God called me home, then so be it. See ya. See ya. I know we got loved ones. We love them. We won't, we'll mess them. But if God called my name and called me home, see you. I got to go, folks. I love y'all, but y'all better follow Jesus so you can get to that place where you know that you know that you know that you know that you know it is entering into the kingdom of God that I'm coming. See, once about a time, I had no idea where I was going. I knew for real, it was hell on earth, and I believe I was on my way to hell. Nothing to play with. It's hot out there. The devil won't company. He's looking for folks every day, those that don't know that Jesus is Lord. When you know that he's Lord, then you know who you are. But when you don't know that he's Lord, you don't know him. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. See, because he'll never leave you 
nor forsake you. In the midst of everything, overcoming temptations, issues, struggles, what do we do? We keep praying because God has the last say. I didn't want mama to die. I didn't. I was miserable. I was sad. And in the midst of her dying, God told me when I was burying her and I was crying so hard because I was living wrong and she was praying for me, God told me, she don't belong to you. She belongs to me. And see, when you can get to that place in your life where nobody belongs to you and it belongs to God, I just got to keep praying. I got to keep praying. Because mama was praying for me when she was dying. And her prayers came to pass. Regardless of what happened, she went home to be with the Lord. It's over for her. She's free. We don't know why God makes decisions like that. But I do know one thing. He never makes a mistake. No matter how we feel and how we look at it. You know, I still wake up days, you know, like on Thanksgiving. I woke up and I got in the mirror and, and I was just crying. Because I was thankful for my mom. I was thankful that she prayed for me. I was, just, I was just crying. I was just like, oh, I was so thankful. I just, mama, thank you for praying for me. And if you know you prayed and you believe, you've done the right thing. See, I know she prayed for me, and she went home to be with the Lord, but she had done the right thing. Her prayers have came to pass. Her prayers have came to pass over my life. And they will over your life, too, if you don't be afraid, even though we have to go through it. But we can't be afraid. We've got to walk in faith. What is faith? Mm. Mm. What is faith? It's Hebrews 11.1. 1. What is faith? Yeah. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The unseen things, because even, even when he's working it out, he's working it out behind the scenes. You can't even see it because he created, the, he created that way. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Because a lot of times we think we have to see everything. Oh, hallelujah. But I learned with God you don't have to see what he's doing. You just, all you have to do is know that he's working it out. Now, see, if you believe it and know that he's working it out, he's working it out. But he's not working it out on your time. He's working it out on his time. See, that, and that's what we have to get as the body of Christ in church and start believing. God is working things out, but he's working them out on his time. Man, Jesus is a bad dude. Boy, when you learn to rock with Jesus, boy, you, boy oh, hallelujah. When you learn to step and rock with Jesus, man, you win. I wish I can get to you what's I, what I got inside of me. It's so good. So good to understand that the Lord is good. And everything that's missing and lacking in us, God provides for us to spring forward. See, some of you today need to catch yourself about what you're thinking about. Some of you really need to catch yourself about what you're thinking about and where you're at. Because too many of us hold on to all the old things yes, sir. instead of what God has for me. Too many of us talking about what it used to be and what it could have been. Well, what is it now? It is what it is. But I'm still going to walk with the Lord. Yeah. I'm still going to trust his ways and not my ways. Amen. And when I do that, I win. Thank you, Psalm 37, 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Yeah. And he delights in his way. The steps of a good man. See, you don't become a good man on your own. That's right. Come on. 
you know, you only can become a good man through the Lord. We can't come, become a good man by ourselves. It's impossible. Well, I'm good. I'm good in society. I treat people good. No, yeah, you still fall short. You know, because they, the steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. Yeah, that's right, girl. And when, when you know they're ordered by the Lord, now you walk a different way. Your integrity is a different way of who you are and the way you treat people, the way you love people, the way you care for people. And the way we're concerned about you, the way, way the leaders of this church is concerned about you growing, and they have so much here to offer to you. But if you don't get here, you don't get it. If you just show up every Sunday and think, well, I'm, I'm looking for the miracle to happen. Well, baby, I'm going to tell you, that miracle ain't going to just happen coming in here on Sunday. You're going to have to come through here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You're going to have to come here and get it. You're going to have to come here and get it because it's here. It's here. The steps of a good man. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. What does a man do? A good man does. He, 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 he follows the will of God. And the will of God takes work. Just don't take coming in here on Sunday and then go back to throw my Bible up on the shelf. Oh, I had a moment. I had a poof moment at church Sunday. Oh, glory to God. Now the devil come knocking Monday morning. And you ain't got a foundation. Now he's throwing all these darts at you. And there you go. Now I'm mad at the dog, the cat, the wife, the kids. I don't know why I'm mad because the devil knocked on my door. And I really don't have a foundation, and he just continued to, like, just rule and reign over me and talk crazy to me. And I believe all this craziness because now I turn on the television, I watch the news, and I get on social media, and now I'm, I'm, I'm fighting with people on there over politics and, and this and that. And all that means nothing. It means nothing. Because in the end, God has the last say over every last one of us. So we have confused ourselves with all the, all the stuff that we're looking at. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because why? Because my steps are not right. So where do I go? I go to the enemy sources to get stuff. Because I don't have the right steps. That's why people plant themselves into the news, social media, other folks, and the devil comes and rule and reign. Yeah. Good girl. That's what he does, right? Yeah. It's no joke. Jesus said it in John 10.10. 10. Jesus said, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have life and may have it more abundantly. Yes, but see, when you don't understand abundant life, abundant life is not stuff. Amen. Abundant life is peace, joy, wisdom, knowledge, power. Oh. Far greater than stuff. Far greater than stuff. Far greater than stuff. Far greater than stuff. You need to get the revelation of it down inside of you. It's far greater than anything that you will ever imagine when you get the revelation of what Jesus is and how to rebuke the devil. That's what he did. He rebuked him. Why? It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Yeah. Every word. Where is the word? Every word comes out of this book. Amen. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When are we going to start getting it? When are we going to start believing it, having the revelation for it? It's right here every day, not just Sunday. Don't just show up Sunday. What about Monday, Bible study, whatever, Tuesday, whatever. Get involved. Get over yourself and get involved. So God can use you. You got a gift inside of you you don't even know about. I didn't even know I had a gift inside of me. But baby, now I know I have the gift inside of me. And it doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. Use it for his glory. Talk about the kingdom. Don't talk about all these things going on. Yeah, the society's broken. Yeah, brokenness reigns about lawlessness. It is real. Everything is happening and everything that's happening to all of us in the society was supposed to happen. If you read this book at the end, that's what's going to happen. It's going to be crazy. And Christ is coming back for the church. Amen. Glory to God that he's going to come back for the church. Amen. Oh, glory to God. We can't flee temptation on our own strength, but God will give us the strength we need if we seek him. Thank you. 
if we seek him. He will give us the strength that we need. See, I can't do none of this on my own. I know the devil come against me. I can't preach. I'm glad I can't preach. I know that. <laughs> and the Holy Spirit can preach. See, I don't have to be in the way. All I got to do is let him go. See, he's going to do what he's going to do. He's just going to float through you if you just let him go. Don't think about what you, why can't you talk? Why, why, he'll talk for you. There you go, brother. That's exactly what he does. He talks for you. And we're going to come to this place where James 4.10, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Yes, sir. Woo! Glory to God. Humble yourself. If a man can humble himself, God will lift him up. If you don't make it about yourself and you make it about him and his kingdom, he will lift you up. If you praise him and give him glory, even in the storms, he will lift you up. He'll know you're serious. He'll know that you're not sitting over there on the sideline worrying about what the enemy's talking about. He'll know that you will continue to go forward. Even though I got something going on, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to walk with humility. I'm going to love folks. I'm going to talk to folks. And I'm going to tell folks, Jesus loves you. I ain't going to tell you you're going to get something, but you're going to get him. You ain't going to get no stuff, but you're going to get Jesus. Amen. Jesus is greater than stuff. Good, good, yeah. Hallelujah. Overcoming temptations, issues. Now I'm going to come to, like, Mark 5. And it's this woman. Oh, she had a, a blood issue. You know. For 12 years, 12 years of blood issue. How many of you got some issues? This woman had a blood issue for 12 years, Mark 5, between 25 and 35. It goes on to talk about how she was. She had a blood issue, and she went to all kinds of doctors, and she spent all kinds of money trying to get well. How many of us have been in that place? We've been in that place trying to get well, spend doctors, this, this will fix me, this will do it. And she heard that Jesus was coming. Some of you today need to know that Jesus is coming. She heard that he was coming, and she thought to herself, thought to herself, thought to herself, if I could only get to Jesus. Some of you. He's waiting on you. What are you waiting for? Well, some of you be saying, well, I'm waiting till I can get it right. You ain't going to never get it right. So I'm telling you right now, stop trying. And as the song starts to play, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Some of you need to rejoice and be glad in it. Because this woman had this blood issue. And she paid all that she had. Went to all kinds of physicians. But she heard about Jesus. And she thought, if I could only get to Jesus. If I could only get to Jesus. And today, some of you need to be like this woman because she knew it would be hard to get to him but you got to be persistent and you got to make a commitment to come after him and she was thinking if I can only get to Jesus and she was on the ground Jesus was over there and there she was crawling to Jesus some of you need to crawl to Jesus Say, Lord, I'm coming. I'm giving up all that I've been worried about. I'm giving up what folks have said about me. I just need to get to you. And this woman was making her way to get to Jesus. Some of you got to be this way today. Come to Jesus like this woman did. If I could only get to him, she thought with her mind and her heart, if I could only get to Jesus. And some of you got to get to Jesus. You need to crawl your way to Jesus. 
you, you, you run to everything else. It's now time to crawl to Jesus. And she got to Jesus, and she got to him, and she touched the hem of his garment. And immediately, she was made well. And Jesus was more like, to his disciples, look around, who touched me? And they were like, Lord, how do you know who touched you? He knew the power that came out of him. The power was the healing power that came out of him. It wasn't just an ordinary power. It was a great healing power that came out of him. My, my, some of you today, you need to crawl to this altar and crawl to Jesus. He's calling you. He's going to heal you. Whatever it is inside of you. I don't care what it is. He's the healer of all things. Don't let the enemy hold you back. As they worship and play this song, you make your way to the altar, to Jesus. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord turn his uh -huh. face toward you. The team's going to be down here. And give you peace. Yes, Lord. If that's you, make your way down here. So we can pray for you. You know you need to get to Jesus. Release yourself and come. Come to Jesus. Come to him. He's got something great for you. You got some health problems? Come to Jesus. You got some financial problems? Come to Jesus. You got some marital problems? Come to Jesus. You got some kids that's got problems? Come to Jesus. Come, come, come. He loves you. 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 Yes, yes, come. This is the day. This is the day. Don't let the devil hold you no more. The devil's tempting you about not coming out of that seat. Get out of your seat. God's got something great for you. He loves you. You're not a mistake. We've just made a bunch of mistakes. We've fallen short. We need a miracle. We need a miracle in our family. We need something to happen. Come to God. He will make the miracle for you. Yes. Lord bless you. Keep coming. And keep you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Come on. Come on down. Come on down. Get down there. God's got something for you. Yes, Lord. Lord, turn his face Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, we're doing it. We're doing it right now. Come on. It's more. It's more. It's more. You know you got that kid out there. He needs you. He needs a healing. Only healing he can get us from Jesus. You need to intercede for that kid. Come on, come down to the altar. Victory. Let's not be let's not be ashamed to come to the altar. This is where the victory is. Is that the cross? Is that the cross? There's nowhere else you can pray all day. But if you don't never come and surrender yourself to the cross, you can never have it. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. That's it. Come on, worship. Stand up. Stand up. Let's go. Everybody, stand up. We're gonna worship God. Come on. Yeah. Press in. Press in. Press in. Press in. Yes. Victory. Come on. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Yes. And your children, they express. Yes, come on. Go before you. Come on, Jesus. Yes. And beside you. Yes. Around you. Come on. And with him. Yes. He's with you. He is with, with you. you. In the morning. Yes. In the evening. Come on. And you're coming. And you're coming.
listen up. Right where you're at. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here today to deliver you. Whatever anxiety you have, whatever frustration you have, he's here to deliver you and set you free from it. God loves you no matter what has happened. God is on your side. God is on your side. All you got to do is trust. All you got to do is believe. All you got to do is come to him. Stop running the other way and come to Jesus. Come to the altar. Come to the cross. Hold on real quick. Hold it real quick right now, everybody. Hold it real quick. Hold it. There's victory happening right now today in people's lives. We need to respect that. Because it doesn't belong to us, it belongs to God. And when God's setting people free, he's doing something far greater than we can understand. Marriages are being restored. Somebody's praying for kids to come back home. Somebody's praying because they've been wounded. In the midst of everything, let God be God. Let God do the work. All we do is participate in his work. Let us pray. Let us pray real quick for those at the altar. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father, Father, we thank you for your grace. Father, we thank you for your mercy. Father, we thank you for the ones that have taken the step to walk down to the altar to you. We thank you for the victory that you are giving them. Father, we don't need to know their issue. All we need to know is you pulled them down here. And you pulled them down here for a reason, to be delivered from something or whatever they're going through or whatever they're praying for. We pray for it right now. We plead the blood of Jesus over them. May they truly understand that this is a new day for them because you have entered into their heart. And we thank you and we give you glory. And we bless all of them. Send this petition up to you. Ask you to cover it over there, Father, right now in the name of Jesus.